Hello, welcome to the Friday, November 3rd, 2017 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and I am recording from Frankfurt, Germany. In the past, there have been few examples of malware that carried valid digital signatures from trusted developers. One of the highest profile pieces of malware was probably Stuxnet, but the researchers at the University of Maryland took a closer look at digital signatures, looking at a large sample of millions of pieces of malware that they obtained via Symantec. And what they found is that there were actually a number of pieces of malware that did carry valid digital signatures. Out of this very large sample, they found 325 signed pieces of malware. Now, 189 or about 60% of the samples were properly signed. Probably even more concerning is that 136 samples did carry a digital signature that was malformed. Apparently a lot of anti-malware will not scan a sample if it does carry a known signature, but uh, the anti-malware solution never verifies if the signature is actually valid for this particular sample. So an attacker can essentially just copy paste a signature from a valid software to a malicious program and uh, the malicious program will now no longer be inspected by your anti-malware solution. This is of course a real big concern. Uh, the malware would probably still show up with an invalid signature once the user starts it but uh, quite often you don't really want to get to the point where you allow the user to make a decision whether or not this particular piece of software is malicious and as far as the valid signatures go most of them were caused by certificates or actually secret keys that were compromised a couple of them were also caused by infected developer workstations and sadly, many of the certificates that were based on these compromised secret keys were never actually revoked. And then, of course, there were also a few certificates, about a quarter of them, that were issued by certificate authorities to entities that probably should not have received these certificates in the first place. Part of this was due to identity theft, but others essentially just used shell companies with lookalike names and such in order to trick certificate authorities into issuing these code signing certificates. The authors of this study do propose a number of improvements to the code signing ecosystem. First of all, something like certificate transparency in order to make it easier for developers to spot these bad certificates. Also, well, that's probably the low hanging fruit here. Anti-malware solutions should properly verify these certificates. And while signed malware is still a big example Exception. It certainly does happen and does happen probably more often than you read about it in the news. And back in 2015, Apple announced that it would require all apps published in 2017 to exclusively use HTTPS for its data transmissions. Well, about a year ago, Apple sort of stepped back from that requirement, still hasn't really enforced this in any applications in the App Store. A recent study by a German security company revealed that about half of the most popular free apps in Apple's App Store still don't secure user credentials adequately via TLS. Some of the applications do use TLS, but don't verify the certificates, which of course makes a man in the middle attack pretty trivial. At this point, there's no word from Apple as to whether there will be a new deadline to enforce a TLS in apps. And yes, while these are only free apps, it doesn't mean that these are apps that don't matter. And sounds like there's hardly a day without any news or bad news about Google Chrome extensions. The latest one is Image Downloader. This extension will insert ads into your page, so it does act like 
Adver. The purpose of the extension is to make it easier to download images from websites. So not sure why you really need an extension like this. And that's probably the best advice. Anyway, go through your Google Chrome or whatever browser you use extensions and make sure you know what your extensions are doing and that you actually need these extensions. And an interesting and maybe somewhat sad study about ransomware shows that actually more than half of the ransomware payments are made by employees, not by their employer. Not really clear why, but probably kind of shame and not wanting to admit that you made a mistake place in here. And the average payment is $1,400. So we're not talking about just a little bit of money. Now, the other interesting thing here about this study that uh, I at least saw was that 21% of office workers admitted to falling for phishing emails and 25% of IT workers admitted to falling for phishing emails. You would think IT workers know better. And I think actually this study really shows that office workers, there may actually be a higher failure rate, but they may not have realized that they're actually clicking on a phishing email. I think the real problem here that sort of combines all of these numbers is that the user is being blamed for clicking on phishing emails. Realistically, well, I have clicked on phishing emails. I don't think you can really identify all phishing emails. As an example, I always bring a reader who actually forwarded us one of those fake court notices that tell you that you're supposed to show up for jury duty or something like this. Well, uh, this particular user actually had a court date on the date noted in the email, just happened to hit them on the right or wrong day. Well, that's it for today. So thanks again for listening and talk to you again on Monday. Bye.